I've been a freelancer for over 10 years and I would not go back to a permanent role. What about you? Are you thinking about what choice to make? Have you started freelancing? Are you a freelancer who's gone permanent? Are you a permanent person who's gone freelance? Let me know in the comments below. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of freelancing versus permanent. If that sounds interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below for more awesome content on open source, digital nomad, and freelancing. So let's break it down into sections. First of all, let's start off with time. Time is so precious. No matter how much money we make, we can never make more time. So time is the most important thing. And one thing you can do is you can take control back when you go freelancing of your time. Would you rather work from 7 p.m. till 2 a.m. rather than nine to five? Done, no problem. Uh, Want to take Monday off last minute? No problem. Becoming a freelancer means taking your career into your own hands and you decide when it's time to look for new projects and for new clients and you can pick which projects and clients to work with. But having all the time in the world as a freelancer is definitely a misconception. Whilst you manage your work schedule, sometimes you can work harder because you're saving up for a car or a house. Other times you might relax a bit more because you don't want to burn out. And you even manage where you work, laptop on the beach, by the pool, in a hot country, in a cold country, whatever you want to do. But you need to be super strict with managing this so that you can get all your tasks done. And most importantly, make sure you do switch off and have a work-life balance. So that is quite tricky. Sometimes I know I can go down a rabbit hole where I'm just so focused on getting something finished that hours turns into days and I might be in a beautiful location or by the pool, but I don't use any of those facilities because I'm just so focused on it. And again, that's great where the community comes in because community always reminds me to take a break. And then if they haven't seen from me for a while, they do the opposite, they say, do you help with anything? And they motivate me to get back into it. So it's really great to have the community so big shout out to the Eddie Hub members, you're all awesome. You definitely keep me on the right track in terms of not working too hard and not working too little. Some people are more suited to the structure of clocking in and out at the nine to five. For me, I like the time flexibility, especially as I work across different time zones. Who's the boss in all this? Whilst I still have to answer to clients, I find being my own boss is really empowering. Being in control of your own workflow as a freelancer is one of the most rewarding and liberating aspects. Some might consider a downside is that you have to manage every side of the business, which also can be daunting. When you're a permanent employee, you might not be involved in all of this. And if you are, you're sharing the responsibility with other people. Paperwork and many hats. As a permanent employee, you receive a salary for the work you do, pay time off, and you might even get a bonus and some fun staff events paid for by the company. And and there is really no admin that you need to do to get these things. But be ready to wear many hats as a freelancer. You need to be the creative, the manager, the receptionist, the boss, the HR, an accountant. Chances are you're not gonna be an expert in all of these areas and it will be a learning curve. But once you've done all of these once or twice, then you're able to reuse a lot of documents, reuse a lot of your email templates, and you can reuse these a lot. So definitely allow yourself a lot of buffer in your first few clients so you can set all of these up and later on you can get more efficient. I definitely recommend hiring an accountant. We won't get into the tax things because Every country has different tax rules and requirements and so forth, but I highly recommend getting an accountant. It will definitely help. I know my accountants do a lot of things that I really don't understand. And as you get more clients, and as your rates increase over time, you can then also grow your team. I have an amazing video editor, so a big shout out to Alona who's editing this video. Thank you so much for all your amazing work that you do. Oh, just in case Sarah watches this video, I better give Sarah a shout out too. So as you all probably know, or probably don't know, I'm not sure, Sarah left being a partner in a law firm after I don't know, 12, 13 years to come and join my team and help me with the Eddie Hub community and all the awesome content that we create. And Sarah really helps me with so many things that I don't enjoy, which is perfect because she, she enjoys them. So it's great. This brings me to the next section. I've kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but I want to say what I've done is I've surrounded myself with great support and great resources to make everything easier. I do have a fantastic team around me and a fantastic community who I learn from all the time. 
Whilst the ultimate decision responsibilities are mine, I have the experts advising me in their areas and making suggestions. So with videos, with content, with accounting, they're making suggestions and improvements all the time and I can make the decision if we want to try it, want to do it or not. Let's talk about variety. I love getting to work with different clients, different projects, exciting projects, collaborating with so many different people. This definitely keeps me challenged and energized and I'm always always learning. Sometimes, unfortunately, with permanent positions, it can be a bit boring, especially if you're doing the same type of work over and over again. You're also unlikely to have a choice of what projects you work on. I really appreciate being able to work with clients that not only recognize the value of my work, but also share the same principles as me. Collaboration first, code second. Let's talk about isolation. I think people do suffer from this, especially in current times. And being a freelancer, means you can start off as a one-person team, so hopefully grow in the future, and you might collaborate with other people who have different skills to you that complement yours. But this could be perceived as lonely, and some people miss seeing colleagues every day, chatting about their weekend over a coffee or going out for lunch. Personally, I do not feel this, mainly as I'm always collaborating with other people on GitHub and I have the amazing EddieHub community members, as I mentioned before. I also make sure that I attend events virtually or in person. It's a great way to network with people that I can learn from and hopefully I can share some of my knowledge with them too. If you're taking the freelancing leap or already done so and you're feeling isolated, then look for ways in which you can engage with others like I do. I highly recommend joining three to four communities, but if you're unsure which ones to join, obviously I highly recommend EddieHub, then why don't you join, say, 10 communities? Don't stay in those 10 for a long time because you can't engage with all of them, but have a look at them, see what people are chatting about, see which ones you think are engaging to you and will add value to you and you can add value to them. The more you put into these communities, the more you'll get out. So I highly recommend sticking to three or four and putting in a lot of effort, help other people, get involved in the conversation, ask good questions, then you'll get so much out of it. And if you ever outgrow those communities or they go in a direction you don't want, you can always change for later. But don't spread yourself too thin. I find it really weird when people say, hey, I belong to 100 communities. It's like, well, you might have joined them on Discord, but you're not reading the chat, you're not getting involved in the conversation. So let's conclude. You might be wondering whether being freelance or permanent has an impact on your career. I don't think neither has an impact. Neither is better or worse. It's really a personal decision of what you want your life to be. And whatever decision you make, you can always change. I started off as a freelancer, and after a year or so, I realized I needed to get more experience working with teams. So I went back, went into permanent, and then after, I think, four years, I went back to freelancing. And so you can change, and your life situation will change. You might be a student now where freelancing makes sense. You can take um, some small projects on the side. Later on throughout your life, you might start a family, have kids, and you might want the stability, and you might go back to permanent. It really depends on you, and it can change any time, so you're not ever stuck to one or the other. I recommend not flip-flopping too much between the two, and in fact, you could probably even do two at once if you wanted to. If you wanted to make that transition to freelancing, you could start with some small clients and small projects on the side while you're having a permanent job. You could take your permanent job down to part-time if you wanted to, or try and get Fridays off unpaid, but then it allows you to pick up some side projects to see if freelancing is for you. Whatever you do, don't burn out. Don't try and do 40, 50 hours in a job and 40, 50 hours in freelancing. Remember to always under promise, but over deliver. Therefore, the clients will keep coming back to you. I do have a video on this on how to impress your clients and how to get better clients, and how to get them to recommend you to all their friends, families, and colleagues and their network. So go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll see you in Discord so we can chat between videos and live streams. And you guessed it, a link is in the description below.